Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be making roasted potatoes, um, some lamb and green beans. This is going to be a meal that I wanted to have had on my last day in Mexico. So literally I just got back from Mexico today. And the last night, I wanted to have a really, really fancy meal in Mexico and shit. But my husband fell and hurt his back in the shower. And so the last night, we couldn't go anywhere. So we had to just stay home. Or should I say, in the hotel. And... Not even eat because the second resort we were at, oh my gosh, that, that wasn't even a resort. So I'm going to give y'all a little bit. You guys, come on vacation with me. Stay tuned. Watch me make this meal. I'll show you some pictures, some videos of my vacation. Um, my birthday was just this past week, or should I say this whole month, because I literally have been snapping, okay, on the gram. <laughs> and insert picture here. No, but I've literally been snapping on the gram this whole month. And I just wanted to celebrate myself, celebrate my, just how I feel, you know, just happy to be alive. Like, for real, for real, a lot of people did not get to see 2020. And the fact that I'm alive, I'm here, my kids are okay, my husband's okay, my mom is okay untouched after so many people have lost theirs it just felt like i needed to celebrate or get out of my own head and just be happy so that's what all of those pictures were about that's what they were about anyway so in true farrah fashion you know it's always sunny in fairland. land sometimes the sun be so bright I did, you know, I fuck shit up sometimes. So, <laughs> Luca's booking the plane tickets. And, you know what? Pause that story. What I just did was wash the potatoes. Because I'm going to keep some of the skin on for the roasted potatoes, you want to clean them very well. And just water is not good in my opinion. So, water and a brush. Sometimes people can use baking soda, water, and a brush, and the baking soda will help take off some of the grit. But if you wash it with hot water and a brush, and then you cook it, you should be fine. Because mi um, <laughs> Stay tuned, and I'll get over here to chop these up and show you how I'm going to do it, and I'll continue the rest of the story. Okay, so we're back. We have our washed potatoes. All we're going to do is dice them up. Any part of the potato you don't like, you can just take a little bit of it off. Don't cut too deep unless you see this. If you do see something like this in the potato, then you could probably dig it out. Yeah, like that. Now we're just going to cut them into medium pieces. Slice them like this at first. And then we're going to slice them in half. And then again, quarters. That should be good. Just some bite-sized pieces. Not too small, not too big. Okay, then we're going to toss them in olive oil, add some salt, some pepper, some Italian seasoning on this, and then we're going to put it in the oven, um, sprinkle some Parmesan on it, and then stick it in the oven. It's really good. Um, I'm just telling you this part so that I can continue with my story. <clears throat> so, I messed up. You know, like, it's always sunny in Farrah Land, and Farrah's always, I'm a little bit nonchalant with a lot of things, uh, 
or should I, I don't want to say careless because it's not that I don't care it's just that sometimes I'm a little absent-minded but anyway I told my husband he says what when are we coming back from Mexico I said oh we'll be I'll be back to work by Monday like you know we'll be done by Monday so he books the tickets for Monday so but the hotel was booked until Sunday so we had this beautiful, okay, five-star suite, okay? <laughs> and then, because one day was, at, okay, we had one day to spare because obviously the flight leaves on Monday, but we only have our room until Sunday. So I go to the concierge and I'm like, okay, um, you know, how much would it be for one night just to stay? Now, full disclosure, originally when I purchased these tickets, I bought it right in April of 2020, meaning Corona had just hit. They just put us on lockdown. So guess how much I got those tickets for? $150. Yes, baby. $150. I'm going to show you that, that hotel right now. Look how beautiful this place is. Oh, I need to zoom out some. Yeah. And this place is gargantuan. Like, this is just where the, one of the lobbies. You wanna do that? Oh, this is the house, baby. You remember the one I was saying, like, oh, wouldn't this be cool if it was a house? You should see this place from the outside. It's so beautiful. We gotta go this way. I know where we have to go. From the outside, this place is like beautiful what did what did he say the place was called that we're going to this is a hotel kid like there's signs because there's so many freaking places to go well we're gonna have to just ask somebody else like hey where's the buffet bitch is hungry those people for food and they not people baby I don't know where I'm going <laughs> okay let me put this down to figure it out you know the kid <laughs> I'm about to fill this bitch up right now right now I hope you're not naked, Lika, because I'm recording. I want, baby, I want to fill up this tub. I'm gonna fill it up right now. Bubbles with a jacuzzi or something and going on. Oops, no. Don't want to see a girl naked and shit. I just love when you come back and your room is all clean. Babe, I need you to make the shower, the tub, um, work for me. Always, uh, clog it so it couldn't, um, cause I just turned on the hot water. I don't know. It's so early. This little walk bridge to cross over. I'm lost again. We, we're going the wrong way. This way. Right. 
Oh, are we going the wrong way still? Baby, can you take the lead? I really don't know what's no happening right now. Senor! <laughs> Donde esta la buffet? <laughs> you ain't know I was bilingual, huh? Buffet. Is it buffet or buffet? <laughs> How do they say it? <laughs> Buenos dias. Donde esta la buffet? The buffet. I don't know. The buffet. Lago. You almost say I'm lost. We were walking for a while now. <laughs> oh, also, this a buffet or buffet? Buffet. Buffet. Okay. I was. I was right. Okay. <laughs> Bro, look at that bird, baby. The chakalaka. <laughs> okay. So you saw that hotel. You saw that room. Okay. $150. Okay. So when I get there, the car shares lady going to tell me uh, it's $400 a night. I was like, eh, that's not happening. Thank you, darling. So I went and I looked on booking and I found this little rickety. Mind you, it wasn't rickety. On the website, they showed you like the prettiness of the, um, the, the grounds. It was really pretty. You know, it was cute. Obviously, it wasn't no five-star resort. It was just nice. And it had... It had um, all-inclusive, which means... And where we were before was not all-inclusive. So it just meant that, okay... We're, it's going to be a downgrade in the spot, but we're going to be able to eat, you know, and drink for free for that one night, and it's going to be fun. Baby, when I tell you, Farrah would not stay in that place. I mean, Farrah did stay in that place, but... Oh, my God. It was just... It, you know what the problem is? It's all relative. You know, if you're young and you, you, let's say if you're 21 and, you know, you go into Mexico, that room would be perfect for you. That place would be perfect for you. Why? Because you're young and your taste buds are not advanced enough. You don't know good food like that. You don't know good liquor like that. So for you, anything they give you, you're definitely going to be like, oh, wow, I get free food, free drinks. It's a bop. What's up? You're going to be happy. But let me tell you, it ain't for no 38-year-old grown-ass woman, okay, with a whole husband in these streets. It really is. It really wasn't. <laughs> and if you, okay, if you've never been to any place super nice, no, fuck that. Scratch that. If you came from this, okay, and then you had to go to that, to this. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I mean, I do have a balcony. Ouch. I mean, there's a balcony here. I guess it's okay. And the beach is over there, somewhere. Uh, since it's one night, I'm not gonna complain. But, you see what I'm working with. From that to this, bruh. You'd feel some type of way too. But anyway, so we get there. We're like, okay, fuck it. I had a little conversation with uh, an acquaintance of mine on Facebook, a Facebook friend. And she said, girl, you're in Mexico. You know what I mean? Just play some Bob Marley and just, you know, fuck it. Don't let, don't sulk because the hotel ain't what you thought it would be. And you know what? I was like, she's right. She's like, make your last night the best night. Thank you, Marcial. I really needed to hear that. And I was like, you're right. You're right, girlfriend. You're right. So here I go, I start playing my Bob Marley, I start getting in my groove, and we go to go get some food. Oh my God, 
The food was like, oh my god. No. So I said, okay, that's fine, baby. We're just gonna go out and we're gonna go have dinner. And you know, so what? We're in a, a little janky hotel <clears throat> for the last night. We're gonna go, we're gonna have dinner and it's gonna be amazing. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna play on making some babies. So that's not how the story ended. The story ended with Luca stepping into the shower slipping and falling and busting his whole ass i'm laughing now only because he's walking about now but literally the man could not move okay and i call these hotel people to tell them my husband is just falling and they tell me oh hold on a second we gonna get you some ben gay and it's gonna cost you 300 pesos the fuck okay so now that we finished dicing our potatoes, we're gonna put them in the baking sheet. Or not sheet, excuse me. Okay, so now we're just gonna take our potatoes and put them into a baking dish like this. It's better if you have a baking sheet, to be honest with you, or like a pan, because then it allows it to be crispier because they're not on top of each other. This method, it's still good, um, but yeah, I don't have a pan right now, so we're gonna use this one. And we're gonna add about a quarter of this onion to it. Okay, we're just gonna dice it up really small, cut it, take the bad parts off, or you know, the ugly peels off, and then just dice it up. So needless to say, so now the next morning, back to the story. So now, <laughs> back to the story. So now the next morning, husband has to be pushed in a wheelchair. Yes, honey. Through the airport, honey. Okay? Because his back was just fucked. Yep. But not all went bad. I mean, I went swimming with dolphins. And I went to Excaret, which was nice. I really thought it was Zelha, which is where I wanted to go. But it was just as nice. I'll show some pictures here. You gonna leave me? Hola. You guys don't have those rubber tubes, you remember? Like it was like a big round circle, like a donut. No. No more. No. Oh, Jesus, it's cold. Gracias, señor. No, no. Okay, so now that we finished dicing our potatoes, we're gonna put them in the baking sheet. Or not sheet, excuse me. Oh, 
Okay, so now we're just gonna take our potatoes and put them into a baking dish like this. It's better if you have a baking sheet, to be honest with you, or like a pan, because then it allows it to be crispier because they're not on top of each other. This method, it's still good, um, but yeah, I don't have a pan right now, so we're gonna use this one. And we're gonna add about a quarter of this onion to it. Okay, we're just gonna dice it up really small, cut it, take the bad parts off, or you know, the ugly peels off, and then just dice it up. So needless to say, so now the next morning, back to the story. So now, <laughs> back to the story. So now the next morning, husband has to be pushed in a wheelchair. Yes, honey through the airport, honey, okay? Because his back was just fucked. Yep. But not all went bad. I mean, I went swimming with dolphins and I went to Excaret, which was nice. I really thought it was Zelha, which is where I wanted to go, but it was just as nice. I'll show some pictures here. And then we saw the show. We had dinner, like a, a seven course um, dinner. And then the show. It was really nice. Really, really nice. Uh, yeah. So all in all, I would give my vacation. If I had to grade it, like the turn up vacation I wanted. It wasn't it. But, you know. I can't complain, at least the girl going on vacation, right? No, 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 at least. I hate the at least. No, expect and want great things. Stop always just being at least. That's how I talk to myself. No, at least. Well, at least he showed up. Well, at least she came. At least, no, no, at least. Show up and show out. Be there and be there. Do you understand what that means? Be present, but also present and in the moment. And live now. Stop expecting or accepting at least from everyone. Even yourself. Anyway. Back to the story, to this meal. So now I'm just drizzling it with some extra virgin olive oil. Not too much. We're going to use a little bit of seasoning salt. Now, if you use seasoning salt, no, it's just like salt. So as much salt as you would add, that's what you're going to add. If you think it's just a seasoning, you're going to add a little bit of salt afterwards, you're going to kill it because this thing is salty. So just think this is salt that you're adding to this because it, it, it is. It's, it's like two times this. You'll fuck up your food messing with seasoning and salt. Anyway, garlic powder. And I like to use the dried herbs on this meal because it's going to go in the oven. And when you use raw garlic or raw whatever, it ends up burning. So the garlic powder is better than the raw garlic. Here goes some thyme. And then... The Italian seasoning these this is gonna like really herb it up and it gives it a really good flavor as well and then we're gonna add a little bit of pepper onto this bad boy and then we're gonna add some Parmesan stir it all up and then put it in the oven let me get that Parmesan while it's right there Onto it, and we're gonna add paprika, right? And then 
we're just gonna stir this all up just to get you can use your hands but I really just don't feel like it right now get it all stirred up and then when you have your potatoes with your meal you have some nice roasted potatoes seasoned well some onions in there make sure your oven is hot before you put this in there because you don't want to sweat your potatoes you want them to roast looks good looks good to me I'm gonna add a little bit of more olive oil because we want it to crisp up a little bit and that's that a little more paprika boom 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 this is roasted potatoes you can put this on I wouldn't put it on the grill just roast it in the oven there we go and then we're gonna go start our lamb okay so now I'm gonna show you how to do this lamb now what I have here is a butterfly leg lamb I have never made this before but I went there to get lamb chops they didn't have lamb chops then I said, okay, I'll get a lamb roast. They didn't have a roast. So I saw this butterfly lamb leg, and it says that it's great for grilling. And I figured if I want to eat lamb, I'm just going to have to make it. So we're going to just make this. And I'm going to butterfly it even more to make it thinner. So butterflying just means they took the leg, and then they ran the knife through or cut it to open like so. Um, but now in this leg of lamb, we have a couple of thick pieces. I'm gonna butterfly it again so it's gonna unfold one more time. So it's thinner. Um, so here we go. First things first, let's wash our meat. Now, lamb always has this extra fat. You want to take some of that fat off. I don't know if y'all can see. I don't know, but basically, just take your knife and pull some of that off. Because you don't need all of that. All of this blank, bristle, whatever you want to call it. It's not good. Uh, but some people may look at something and say, oh, I've never made it, so and they're too intimidated to make it. You know what? I'm going to put it up here. That way you can see what I'm doing better. Because right now, I'm cleaning it up. Right? Is that better for you? Okay. So we're just going to cut some of this fat off and all of this gristle and slimy pieces anyway some people get intimidated by me and say oh i'm not gonna make this because i've never made it well if you never try it you'll, you'll never you'll never make it so just try it or google a recipe or follow Fairyland. tell me what you want me to make i'll make it tell me how you want me to make it i'll make it get some of this be careful with your hands too people don't want to cut too deep see right here I cut a little bit too deep so now I cut into the meat I don't want to do that so I'm gonna fillet it again to take just the fat off that's all I want all my meat can stay all this fat but you don't want to take off too much of the fat it's a, there's a very fine line because you want some of this um, in lamb. You want some of that <clears throat> fat in there. Just a little bit though. Oh, this extraness. And a lot of the fat is where the in the fat is where the gaminess relies. I mean, resides. Have you ever had lamb and it tastes really, really gamey, or goat meat and it tastes really gamey? It's because they didn't cut out a lot of the fat. <clears throat> oh, so now if you're trying to travel to Mexico, honey, you have to have a COVID test leaving and coming back. 
And guess how much they charge you for you to take the COVID test to come back? And you ain't getting on that plane, honey, unless you got that test. Yes. Two thousand pesos. Dos mil pesos. Okay. Granted, that's one hundred and fifty dollars, about. But still. Still. tacos up the wazoo favorite taco is el pastor <laughs> okay okay so this looks about done like i said we don't want to take all 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 of the fat because when i'm cooking it i'm going to put it face down in the oil now what we're going to do is just wash this like we do with all of our meat with some lemon or lime this is the lemon I'm just going to spill some lemon on it. Okay. Too much of a fuss with this lamb because it was pretty darn good. Yeah. I should cut it again. I fear then when I'm slicing it, it's gonna be too thin. No, we're not gonna cut it again. Okay, I'm gonna leave it just like this, just how it is. Let's pour out some of that towards camera, Farah. Juice. I'm gonna give it a vinegar rinse as well because yeah let's just do that oh my god I forgot to tell you guys now my son was like oh mommy um you're not afraid to go to Mexico you might come back with corona yeah you took the test to go you know what if you come back and blah 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 and I had a friend saying, oh my gosh, like, girl, I'm afraid to get stuck in Mexico, you know, because if you, you know, stuck, you got to be there 14 days, blah, 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 blah. Now, baby, when I tell you that five-star resort, no games, no games to be played, okay? When you walk, when you get there, before they grab your bags, they spray your bag. The bellboy has a freaking sanitizer spray in his pouch, uh, in his little belt. He sprays your bag, he wipes it. He then gives you hand sanitizer. After he gives you hand sanitizer, before you walk into their building, they have a little thing, a little mat with sanitizer. You have to step your feet in it and then wipe your feet before you walk in. When you get on the golf cart to get around the, the property, they tell you before when you get around the go when you get on the golf course before you get on they spray the seats and wipe it when you get up before anybody can get on they spray the seats and wipe it everybody has their mask on double mask like literally a mask and a face shield for the people who's handling your food and the buffet insert picture here or video here the finally we've arrived <laughs> Finally, the buffet. You should see how clean these people are. Buenos dias. Dos, si, por favor. Um, three zero four six. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
Gracias, Señor. Good morning. Okay. So social distancing, as you can see. And then the buffet, they give you the food. You don't take it, actually. What is this? Let's see. Churros. What is this? Oh, they make French toast from scratch, babe. And then these are all the toppings. Oh, that's so good. It's in a case, behind the case. See? Yeah. This is how buffet should have been in the first place. Look how clean the glass is. It almost like it's a see-through. Mm -hmm. But there's a glass there. Oh, and all the hot food is here on this side. Oh, pork. There you go, pork. There's meat. Sirloin, I'm on it. Okay, we gonna eat. That's We gonna eat. Okay, stop. How do we eat now? The buffet... Honey, was amaze balls. Literally amaze balls. They don't have the shield. Like, you can't touch the food because the shield comes all the way down. It's like the food is in a case. And then the people are the ones who's like, would you like this? Would you like that? And then you have to say yes, like, go through the line. So no, everybody touching the food and all of that good stuff. So you really feel safe and secure that they are doing their part to make sure you bring your ass back to Mexico, honey. So, yes, I felt safer in Mexico in terms of the cleanliness of their establishment than I did here. Let me tell you, too. So when I went to go get my, my test, my, um, covid test when lady was done she made me step into this the sanitizer plate thing and then she doused she sprayed lysol all over me and gave me hand sanitizer and told me to leave now over here it was just like all right thank you get the fuck out mm -hmm, we'll tell you in two to five days if you got your covid or not and that was that so when i tell you i felt like okay they were doing something they were doing something okay we're gonna i'm gonna show you how to season this meat stay tuned Okay, so now we're back. What we're going to use to season this meat is very simple, and it's almost kind of what I always use to season my lambs because this is how I like it. But I'm going to douse it first with some olive oil, and then I'm going to douse it with some mustard. Mustard is tangy. It has that vinegar in it. It's going to make your meat taste great. So you add some mustard to it. I'm going to add some well, let me rub it in first. That oil and that mustard. So this is going to be my hand that's touching everything. And this will be the hand that's going to sprinkle. Now we're going to add some salt to this. The thick sea salt, um, Himalayan sea salt. A good amount. And then we're going to add some garlic powder to this. Mm-hmm. And we're going to add some rosemary, some dried rosemary to this. And then we're going to add garlic pepper. I mean, not garlic pepper, excuse me, lemon pepper. Just a little bit of lemon pepper on there. Because you know the lemon zest that's in there, it's just great with lamb. Now you just want to press that in like so, like so, like so. And then we're going to do 
the other side. Mm. We're gonna add some more pepper to this. Cause I was just lemon pepper, but this is actual pepper. Good. And then a last but never least, some thyme. Oopsies. Some thyme, we're gonna Unsprig them. There we go. And now, while you're doing this, you want to get your pan nice and hot because we're going to first sear this in a pan and then we're going to stick it in the oven. So make sure your pan is nice and hot while you do this. I mean, while you are seasoning your meat. Okay? Now, that sounds, that's great, okay? Now we're gonna flip it, but before you flip it, I'm gonna take this liquid off of here, I don't want it. Okay. And do the other side, and then this is our fat side. Gonna add a little bit of olive oil, mustard, Good amount of salt. Now remember, it looks it may look like, oh, that's a lot of salt. No, not really, because um, the lamb is thick. And we're not actually letting it marinate for so long. Garlic powder. Lemon pepper. Rosemary. Pepper. In no particular order. It's okay. As long as we get all of it. All of the ingredients. It's okay. And then the thigh. Okay, now we're just going to let this sit for a minute, and we're going to check on our hot pan. Stay tuned. The meal is almost done. Okay, so we're back. We have a very hot pan here. <laughs> we have a very hot pan. We're going to add our olive oil, as you can see. That's very hot. I guess there was a little bit of oil, I mean water in that um, thingy. So just add our olive oil. Now we're gonna take our lamb leg and we're just gonna put it face down. Just here. I'm gonna add some more rosemary to this side. What I'm doing right now is putting some in my hand and crushing the rosemary to kind of wake it up a little bit. Because when you have dry herbs sometimes, yeah, you might need to do that. To awaken the flavor of the rosemary. And then we're gonna add our parsley, I mean not parsley, Thyme, with some more thyme on top of this one. You just want it to sear. And then we're going to flip it. And then we're going to put it in the oven. Okay, so now after a couple of minutes, we're going to check it. 
see what it looks like. See what it looks like. Alright. Obviously it's not done. This is where the oven is going to finish it. We're just searing it right now. And then we're going to flip it this way. Now, I'm really thinking if I should, after doing this, deglaze the pan with maybe some wine, add some onions and some carrots in there, and then put it in the oven and let it cook in juice. Or, if I should just stick it in the oven like this. Yeah, we're going to make an old view with this. So once we finish that side, I love lamb and I'm going to taste it right now. A little piece because I'm home. And do a little something, something. Okay, I changed the meal. Now that we're finished with that, doing that, let that cook some more. Okay. I know I said we were making one thing one way, but we're going to change it up after looking at it. After washing it. Now I'm just rotating it to get all of this onto the meat. That color. See that? To get it onto the meat. So while it's up here, I'm going to take some, some beef broth, hit it with some beef broth, all right? Don't worry, kiddos. It's about to be on and popping. We're going to hit it with some beef broth, right? Now all those good bits, we're going to try to scrape it without ruining our pan, but scrape some of that off. We're gonna take our lemon juice, a lemon. We're gonna squeeze some lemon juice on there. Try not to get the seeds in there, lovies. The seeds out. All right. So we got some beef broth in there. We're gonna lower the fire a little bit. We're gonna add some minced garlic. Good amount of minced garlic in there. And then I'm gonna dice up some mushrooms. You want it to lower because we're about to stick this in the oven. So we're gonna add some mushrooms to it. And it's not no special way I'm cutting them. Just cutting up some mushrooms and adding to it.
And I'm not cutting them too thin. I like to have a chunk of mushroom in my food. Onion to this, about a quarter of our red onion. I'm gonna add to this. Slice that up. Add it all over to it. And then we're gonna add some butter. About, I wanna say this is about three tablespoons of butter about yeah so we're gonna add that onto it i want to put it on the meat because i want it when it's in the oven and it melts it melts on that meat word now we're gonna add some thyme on top of that meat all in this broth and then we're gonna stick this baby into the oven. Oh, we're gonna add a little bit of Jamaican hot pepper. Just to give it a kick. Just a little, oh shit. Bumble clock. <laughs> that was a little bit more than I intended, but whatever. Okay, we're gonna spoon it over this. And then, we're gonna set it in the oven for about a good 25 minutes and then it'll be ready. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. What do I need to add to this thing? I don't need to add no more things to this. Maybe I'll add a little bit more beef broth so I can have more sauce when the meal is cooked. Just a drop more. But that's it. It's going in the oven at 450 for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. We'll see. And then we are done. Okay, now we're going to make our side dish. You guessed it. Green beans. <laughs> but I'm going to make them different this time. Right now, I'm just slicing up some bacon. Because we're going to add some bacon to this green, to these green beans. And some onions to this green beans. And it's going to be num 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 delicioso. So in a cold pan, you want to add your bacon. Why? Because now your bacon will crisp. Normally, if you add your bacon to hot pans, what happens is it will turn all chewy and rubbery. So add it to a cold pan and you'll notice that you'll get crispy bacon. And we want crispy bacon for this dish. Now, I'm just going to take a spoon and just break them up a little bit. I I should have did that, but hey, whatever. It's going to work. So we're just gonna add our bacon to this pan. And you don't have to add bacon if you don't want bacon. I just wanted bacon. You can work it a little bit. I'm working it. I'm working it. Now while that bacon is doing its thing, I'm gonna go ahead and dice my onions. I'm gonna add, cause we remember we used one onion for this whole meal. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my onion off. And dice this up. Maybe I don't add all of it. Maybe I add about this much. Mm -hmm.
Okay. So now that I've diced my onion, my bacon is doing what I want it to do. You don't want to add your onions too soon because the water from your onions will now cause your bacon to not get so crispy how you want it. One more sauce here. I think it's safe to add the onions to the Bacon is looking kind of right here. I want to bite here. Now I want to take some of this. I want to take the fire down a little bit. And all of this oil, we do not need this in our string beans. So we're going to pour this bacon fat out. But not all of it. Because that's what we're going to use to flavor our food. So give me a second. Let me drain this oil. See, as you can see, the bacon is nice and crispy. Now we're going to add our onion. Stir that up. And I took out a lot of that grease from here, as you can see. Once your onion gets a little bit see through or translucent, so you see them like, yeah, a little bit like this. You want to add your garlic. about a good tablespoon and a half, teaspoon and a half on there. Okay. All of this in your green beans. So tell me if these are going to be some good green beans. Now I have the Prince Charles, or excuse me, the Prince Edward Melody, which is green beans, wax beans, and carrots. So I'm going to add that and I'm going to add a little bit of green beans. So this one is just mostly because it's colorful, and that's just great. And now, I want more green beans, so I'm going to add just the green beans. And this is good. Shake it up. And pour. could now season it. Add a little bit of garlic powder. I really feel like garlic powder goes on everything. Don't at me, cause it do, period. And that's on what? <laughs> Mary had a little lime. <laughs> Add a little pepper. <laughs> and then some um, Himalayan salt. Just a sprinkle of that, not too much. And toss it. And once your beans are cooked, you're ready to go. Stay tuned. After a few minutes, there you go. You have your sides, your green beans. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper to this, um, a little more pepper, and that's it. And we're done. See you at plating. So now what we're going to do is take our spatula, and you're just going to scooch it under these potatoes. Try to get all of it. You can do this up. Just take your spatula and unstick your potatoes. 
See, there you go. Oopsies. But as you can see, they're all ready and ready to be filled. Okay, and when your lamb comes out of the oven, it should look something like this. And there's your potatoes, and there's your beans. And we're about to plate. Mm. Daddy, it's ready.